Hey again, you may be wondering why I am still in my garden and why Deacon Chris is leading the service today. Well, there are two reasons why I am preaching from my garden. The first reason is that my family is currently under medical quarantine while we await coronavirus test results. On Thursday, just before we were going to record the service, uh, my children each spiked a fever, all three of them, and um, we realized that we needed to get tested for coronavirus. Megan and I currently have no symptoms and our kids are doing just fine. We hope to have test results on Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest. We appreciate your prayers uh, during this time. But the second reason I am in my garden is because today is Rogation Sunday. Um, and Rogation Sunday, this term comes from the Latin word uh, rogatio, which means to ask. And it's a special Sunday in our church year um, where the church would gather to ask God to bless the fruits of the earth to give them a good harvest. And actually the congregation with the priest would gather and process through the fields in their village and pray over the fields, asking God to give them a good harvest. So as I stand in this garden, um, would you pray with me this morning? Father, every good gift comes from you. We thank you for your good and beautiful creation and that you feed us and provide for our needs from that creation. We ask you, Lord, would you bless our land, make it fruitful, but more importantly, Lord, would you bless us and make us fruitful, make us branches that bear fruit. Amen. You know, since the lockdown, it seems like everyone has gotten into gardening. My social media feed has been flooded with pictures of people's plants and gardens, people who have never taken any interest in gardening whatsoever are suddenly building raised beds, going to the store and buying soil and planting away. Uh, even my sister, who has never in her life been into gardening, has started a garden. She even confessed to me um, that she originally planted the garden for my niece, but that she is the one who has become really into the garden, checking on her plants daily. And so uh, this past week ago, she texted me and Megan this picture of one of her tomato plants. And she had the question, which she asked, any idea what this is on my little tomato plant? Her little tomato plant had some spots on it, as you could see, some spots of fungus um, that had infected those leaves. What my sister needs to do is she needs to pluck off, she needs to remove those infected leaves or else her little tomato vine will never produce fruit. It will never grow and be a healthy vine. Now this can seem counterintuitive. I have to rip leaves off of my precious little baby tomato plant in order for it to thrive and bear fruit. The answer is, yes, you do. In order to burst with life and be fruitful, vines must occasionally be pruned and even sometimes have unfruitful branches removed. The same is true for our lives. The same is true for us. Jesus says in our gospel reading today, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. That it may bear more fruit. All of us are going through a really intense pruning process right now. It might even feel like some parts of our lives are being completely cut off. But I am convinced that out of this season of pruning, God is going to take our lives and make them burst with life. 
God is gonna give us an abundant and fruitful life. God is cutting off the dead branches and pruning the good branches to make the whole vine burst with life. So that's what I wanna look at with you this morning. How does God prune the vine and how do we become fruitful branches? First, God prunes the vine. The word used for pruning in verse three is actually the same word in Greek as to make clean. Biblical scholar Raymond Brown offers this translation, which I really like. The vine dresser cuts off any of my branches that does not bear fruit, but any that bears fruit, he trims clean to make it bear more fruit. The vine dresser, God, is cleaning the branches to make them bear more fruit. God is cutting away the bad parts of the branch to make it clean and fruitful. God is cutting out of us all the dead parts of our lives so that we can be bursting with life and have fruit. This is why Jesus says in verse four, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. God's word cleanses us. It prunes us. Right now, many of us are being tempted towards unholy judgment of others. We are judging people for taking coronavirus too seriously. We are judging others for not taking it seriously enough. We are judging people for opening back up, and then we are judging people for not opening back up. But the word of Jesus says, judge not lest you be judged. In the weeks ahead, there will be more opportunity for unholy judgment. I assure you of that. As your pastor, I want to exhort you, cut it out. Let the word of God, the words of Jesus, cut this sin out of your heart. Pruning makes us a better branch, not a branch that is better than other branches. Pruning is a severe mercy. I'm not saying that everything we have lost in this season was bad. There are many good things that have been taken away, which I hope will be restored soon. But I believe God has also pruned away from us some harmful things that were holding us back from an abundant life. Excessive consumerism, absenteeism from our families, an unhealthy attachment to our work, getting our sense of value and worth from what we produce rather than from who God says that we are. We are called to put our branch, ourselves, under the pruning shears of the vine dresser. The reward of this temporary discomfort of pruning now is fruit, fruit that will last for all eternity. But then there's a step beyond pruning, not just cutting back, but cutting off. So second, Jesus says, every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he takes away. I wanna show you some fruit trees in my garden to help you um, understand what Jesus is saying here a little better. So this is uh, my satsuma tree. And if you look closely, you can see that there's two different types of wood. There's this wood right here, which is called rootstock. And then there's this graft um, that is the good, um, the good fruit that produces good fruit. The rootstock is wild and hardy and tough to withstand the cold, um, but it doesn't produce good fruit. And so we, the, what they do is they graft on good fruit um, tree onto the rootstock, something that produces delicious fruit, juicy, good, sweet fruit. Now, uh, what sometimes happens is that there are little shoots, because this thing is wild and tough, it'll send out its own shoots. And when they come out, they come out thorny and tough and they don't produce fruit. You can see a picture on your screen right now of what they look like. These are called 
suckers. Suckers don't produce good fruit. And so what Jesus is saying in this passage today is that God is cutting off the suckers, the branches that don't produce fruit, that just suck life from the tree without producing fruit. So third, how can we be fruitful? Starting at verse four, Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. The branches abide in or remain in the vine, and as a result, they produce fruit. You can't be a fruit-producing branch without being connected to the vine. You can do no lasting good in this life apart from Jesus. In verse nine, Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. God's love for us is like sap. It's like sap that flows through the vine and out to the branches, enabling them to produce fruit. The sap flows from the Father to the Son and then from the Son to us, the branches. And then Jesus tells us how we abide in this love. He says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. What commandments is Jesus talking about here? Well, we didn't hear this in our gospel reading today, but it is the very next verse after our gospel reading ends. Verse 12, Jesus says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Several times in the gospel, Jesus tells us the two great commandments, love God and love people. These are the backbone, the heart of our mission statement here at Trinity, love God and love people. That's the core of our mission statement. It's our fundamental call as Christians, according to Jesus, to love God and love people. And I take great comfort from this verse about Jesus cutting off the unfruitful branches because what it tells us about God, God is unwilling for his love to be withheld from the world. He will not tolerate his love not being extended to the world. The fruit of abiding in Jesus is that the love of God flows from the Father to the Son and to you and then to the ends of the earth. It's our mission statement. Love God, love people, and share life with the world. Don't be a sucker. That's what Jesus is saying in this passage. Don't be a sucker. The Father's love for the Son has been poured into your hearts so that you can love others. That's the fruit. Judging others will block the sap of God's love and turn you into an unfruitful branch. Jesus shared the love of the Father so that we would share it with the world. As you look at your life, are you full of the love of God? Are you so connected to Jesus that the Father's love for his only son is going straight into your own heart? But here's the critical question. Does it stop there? Does it stop with you? Are you just a sucker? Or do you abide in the commandment of Jesus to love others? I wanna exhort you. Stop judging and start loving. Love the way that Jesus loved. Let this time of pruning shape you into a fruitful branch. Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear fruit more fruit. God is pruning the branches of the vine to clear away the dead parts and make it burst with life. 
he's cutting off the suckers. And his true vine, Jesus, will extend that love to the ends of the earth through us, his branches. May it be so. Amen.